Controversy. Hold on, I have to s- turn off all my IG notifications because that's all it was at one point. <laughs> Everybody had an opinion on this, but that's it was true. inspiration, right? It was inspiration. It I was. gave us an idea, so and we all know, Paul, that's not the way you eat corn. Oh my god, we're still with the corn jokes. <laughs> Jesus, how many podcasts is that? Like four in? <laughs> Hey, if you, could dish, if you could dish it out, you better be able to take it, remember. Yeah, true. <laughs> so, to guys, today we're talking about the whole UF4, Ultimate Fallout 4, Acetate, Clay and Crane cover from, what con was it? C2E2. C2E2 that caused the whole controversy. And if you follow us, you probably follow a bunch more comic accounts, so you know that you can go without seeing it on your feed for like five minutes. Yeah. We spent almost, was it two weeks? On just two, three weeks. Constant, yeah. constant hits on that, yeah. Like, we, we didn't want to get involved. We waited uh, some time to drop this podcast because of that. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to get into details or specifics on what happened. I'm sure everybody knows already. So if you don't know, go find out. And honestly, we could care less. Pretty yeah. much. This just so. gave us an idea of controversial just, variant right. covers. Correct. So little known fact, guys, this only makes up 5% of the annual comic book revenue for a year. Variant covers. Yeah. Variant covers. Okay. Like this type of variant covers. Not the regular DC Marvel produced variant covers. These are artist specific through retail stores. Right. It's only five percent of the industry. You would have thought it was fifty, but it's only five. Oh, if you go if, if you go on IG, <laughs> it's like ninety five percent of the industry is is retailer variants. Yeah. But so what happened is for those of you that don't know, an acetate cover was added onto a book post production. Correct. So it wasn't approved by Marvel. It was just done with the artist's uh, with the artist's authorization, and they actually did the acetate cover as well. So there is some flexibility to that. But that led to the whole thing of controversial variant covers and controversial issues that we could say are banned, were never produced, or were pulled. Right. So, I mean, that was obviously the number one on the radar. The first one that came to all of our minds was what they did with Stanley, the yeah. DNA issue. So back in was 2015, there was a comic shop or a shop in Las Vegas that was using a Stanley stamped signature, which included in the ink for that signature was Stanley's DNA. How the DNA was acquired is still something that's debated because at that time Stanley was you know in his mid 90s i think 95 yeah and it was part of elderly abuse mm. is what so there saying. was there was there was a lot of questioning whether it was uh Stanley consented to giving the blood and to be used for the ink on that book little known fact though it wasn't the first time actual blood and dna was used in a book right or in a, any type of the production process correct it was just the way that the blood was acquired was was the controversy because yeah. again it was you know elderly abuse at this point in time stan lee's just pretty much signing everything and he's just being drugged to shows to sign as many books as possible so the ink on that stamp has supposedly stan lee's dna that was taken from his blood and then there's a sticker on the actual cover that shows that that is a legit DNA issue. Yes. So now, there were two issues that this was involved in. Rise of the Black Panther, number one. And Thor 700. That were part of this controversy. Correct. Right. So then a couple of the issues, the book made it out to the public, and a lot of people picked up the book, and it was a, it was a high-priced book, depending on yeah. which signature you got, but uh, a couple of them actually got slapped. Mm-hmm. And By who? Our good old friends, PGX. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, you're in a garage. Why not? You'll slap. So they're yeah, (laughs) (laughs) but they're the only ones that actually slab that book, and I I forget exactly how many copies got slabbed, but there's a couple out there. Yeah, and uh, props to CGC and CBCS because their rules say I at least have to witness it. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, I at least have to be there. And CBCS does verified signatures, but this wasn't an actual signature. This was a stamp. It's a yeah, it a was signature a, stamp. It's a, basically they get they scan your 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 signature and they they put it on a stamp so you can plop it away. Ironically, my first time that I went to C two E two, I went with a friend at the time, and he wanted to get Stanley's signature, so I waited in what's called like the Falcon's Nest, so where you have the food court is on top overlooking the whole con. 
So he was at a distance. I was there, but I also had line of sight into the back. You know where those black curtains are where yeah. you do the signatures? Mm -hmm. That's for the artists and writers to get in and out. He was golf carted in. He had a conversation with Frank Miller. I saw all this and I have pictures to prove it. And then he was whisked away to the black. You could see his handler moving his hand to mimic the signature at that point. Yeah. Like it, it was sad. Like I was just like, damn. And mind you, before he actually made it out to the crowd, he probably signed 200 plus books, yeah. which was probably the person who was throwing C2E to whoever it was. Right. But it was sad. Yeah, the way the, the way they handled his 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 later years was it was controversial in itself, but it was it was sad. Yeah, no, no. The manager that was handling himself was a scumbag. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's 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 one of those issues that actually made it out. Had the you know the story behind it. Now, there there depending on what article you read, depending is is the story you get. But PGX Slab actually says you know it's a it's a Stanley DNA issue. Yeah. Well, that's also what that what the certificate that it comes with. That's what it says. Correct. And it was sold by Marvel Avengers Station. Yeah. Like a store that that's inside of uh, the uh, Treasure Island. Yeah, one of the Vegas. casinos in Vegas. Yeah. yeah. And apparently, I was I was looking online. And people have had many issues with this store, like not knowing if they're actually licensed by Marvel or not. Issues with their orders, like they're yeah, you're getting stuff directly from us, and then their their packages are coming from Walmart. So yeah, shady, shady, shady company. Going to another avenue of the controversial covers, we have the Batgirl 35 variant that never got produced. The Raphael Albuquerque variant. Which is, for those of you that don't know, it's an homage to Killing Joke. And it has the Joker in his uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirt, shirt with his hat uh, pictured next to a Batgirl that's tied up. And is she wounded, right? She's well, she, wounded. And she has like the Joker smile on her face. That he put with his finger with yeah. the, with the blood that he got from her. Yeah. And yeah. he's pointing a, a gun at her, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is the whole story. Obviously, you know, Killing Joke leads to Oracle. She was paralyzed. Joker took advantage, did everything to her. And the funny thing is, it created controversy once it was um, FOC'd. So right. the cover was shown, right. but it was never produced. My whole thing is, like, the people outside the industry and outside the collectors were the ones that had an issue with that cover. There were, to a smaller extent, some some collectors that had, the, that had an issue with it. But there was, you know, it wasn't done without, like, an intent. There was a purpose. He's homage. Like, it, it's a reference to a... An important part in Batgirl history. That's still relevant comments, today. still relevant today, yes. But I have an issue with those collectors that had a problem with it. So that means you have a problem with the cover, but not the killing joke? Like, come on, yeah. I think just because you have it's more overt in the cover. And I think some of the issue, even some some of the artists had, to, or the writer, was because it it didn't mesh with the current arc where like they wanted Batgirl to be a, like a lighter tone. And that cover doesn't display the, the lighter tone of, of the book that it was coming out like that 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 title was was supposed to be like a lighter fun Batgirl. you know obviously she's back she's running around but that, i think he pulled it he, like he he himself pulled it yeah. the artist yeah. actually said yeah I'll, I'll, I'll take it down now i wonder what he did with the original art oh, i'm sure he's got it yeah so the funny that thing is the original art has never been seen that we found but a similar book that had controversy like that was a uh, spider, spider woman number one the 2014 run mm -hmm. Which, if you guys see the cover, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. It's Spider-Woman crawling on a building with her ass overtly defined and out there. But the funny thing is, this is an homage cover to a Danger Girl, J. Scott Campbell variant. Correct. So, But that's from the late 90s, and covers were mostly like that in the 90s, and no one was making a big deal because it wasn't the internet to point at it. <clears throat> yeah, the internet was in its infancy. Yeah. But that original cover art sold. Yes, so well that that variant cover was published by Marvel, but they moved the the Spider Woman title. They placed it up to cover her butt. Yeah, the banner title. Yeah, the covered. banner of the title covered her butt. The whole issue was butt, which is funny because Spider Woman most of the time her butt's on the cover. Yeah. That's what, they even yeah. make fun of in the comics that her butt's always out there. Yeah. So it, it, they they printed it. They covered the butt, but the original cover sold at auction at um, Heritage Auctions in Europe. Sold in 2020 for $37,500. Nice. I think that's pretty cheap. Yeah. Given yeah. the history surrounding this cover. Yeah. But this is also went right before the boom. Sticking with that, the Batgirl, the Spider Woman, there were a lot of more recalled covers because of the over-sexualization. Yes. <clears throat> and then the over-sexualization of female teen characters. Right. Understandable. So. Some oh, no, are, completely Some agree. of them are way too young to be put like that on covers. Yeah, to be sexualized to that yeah. degree. And it's funny because 
when we were looking at this, New Teen Titans number one had Wonder Girl on the cover, which she is supposed to be a teenager, mm-hmm. and she does belong to a group called the Teen Titans. Yeah. You know, but this one did get released. Mm-hmm. And it was number one cover B, and it was just Wonder Girl over sexualized with um, enhanced female body parts. Right. Yeah, they gave her huge, like, fake looking boobs. Yeah, exactly. So, but that wasn't where it stopped. We also had uh, Riri Williams. Yes. In Invincible the, Iron Man the, number one. The Scott Campbell the variant. The Scott Campbell, yeah. The J. Scott Campbell variant, which she's another teenager right. that was sexualized. And everything J. Scott Campbell does is, is over sexualized. Yeah. So but that one made it out. That one didn't make, that it, one out did make it out before they called them back. And then Marvel recalled it and then yeah. released a, a covered up version. Exactly. So. She's wearing a suit or something, I think. Yeah, she's wearing the actual, I think, yeah. Iron Man mm. suit. Um, the one that was pretty bad, I will say, is the Powerpuff Girls. Yes. That one was pretty damn bad because they're supposed to be like in kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> and they drew them like, um, like sexualized high- anime style. Yeah. Like, that's fucked up. And older, eh? Yeah, they look like they're in high school. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're wearing tight. They're wearing their same outfits. Right. But, like, you know, as grown-ups. So, it was uh, Powerpuff Girls issue number six subscription variant. The subscription variant. That that was released, but they they pulled it. So, there's some out there. But there are some out there. Yeah. yeah. But at least they realize. But the funny thing is, though, you have to get approval to draw these covers. You have to send in a makeshift one. Then you send in the real one. Then it goes through quality control, and then it goes through production, and yet it still made it out because they're not thinking. You re- you realize those books are for kids. Like that's not for a twenty year. Well, well, the thing too is that more targeted towards kids. The thing is that you know some in in a, in a day and age where everything goes, there you know some some of these people don't even think about it. They don't think this is a kids book. They see like oh, okay, he drew the Powerpuff Girls, you know, older and you know scantily clad. Okay, whatever. I can only see it if they do an adult version of it as far as the Powerpuff Girls being older. Right. Like uh, when they did Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. But a lot of these people don't know the story. Remember, a lot, of, a lot of these people that look at the art, they don't know the story. They don't know what's going on. True. So, True. I mean, it's, it's, it's not an excuse. Yeah. But I can see how these things make it past certain levels of quality control. Or shouldn't these people are supposed to know what the book's about? <laughs> no, and they know like, hey, this is a geared towards kids. Right. Yeah. You know, like um, when they did, like when they are doing the adult version of Archie with Riverdale. Hey, you cannot put it past the fact that they do it on purpose to generate hype. Sometimes and to yes. generate, or sales. sometimes it just goes by because it's not paying attention. Yeah, because the, right. I mean, IDW they have a whole bunch of books and they have a bunch of bestsellers. Are they really giving the same amount of attention to Powerpuff Girls as they are to the number one right. book? I get it. They so. probably aren't. But look at look at like Grimm's fairy tales. I mean, every one of those covers. Look at Zombie Tramp. Every one of those covers is yeah, but so, they're not. But they're not kids. They're not kids. But it's such a normal thing nowadays to put these 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 covers out there that I can see how people just you know. I want to see normal. It's just it's it's a part of the comic thing. We've it's seen a part, yeah. from all the way back in the thirties. Uh, yeah, like good girl yeah. art. Good girl art. Completely yeah. agree. And the one that came to mind, even though it was geared towards adults, but it was kid characters was air pirates mm-hmm. yeah mickey pushing weight yeah. mickey mouse was literally driving an airplane pushing bags of cocaine <laughs> and hey this isn't something that's 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 uh New. that's just in the, in the u.s this is in europe japan japan you want hyper sexualized <laughs> yeah. young characters oh, no, yeah, holy sure. crap dragon ball we've been watching dragon ball as kids oh yeah and this old man is like creeping on Young girls. On young girls. Yeah. They're like in Master middle Roshi. school. Master Roshi's a bastard. Yeah. That dude would be canceled now. But the, <laughs> Rightfully the, so, though. The Air Pirates book, the cover's probably like the, 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 the most decent thing about that book. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you read that book, oh my God, man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, you think Disney characters could do all that shit? Like, wow, man. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. One that rightfully didn't make it, though, which when we laughed about it, we're like, it's pretty fucked up. I wish it did. I wish it did because I I read Ecstatics back in the day and it was a stupid fun comic and you got a, you got a little bit a taste of it in Deadpool too. Go for it. So Ecstatics issue fifteen. Now this book was never published. It 15 never or five. Fifteen. Oh, okay. It never made it past this. It made it to the solicitation, which is really funny. They never printed this book. Okay, so Ecstatics fifteen and guys, this is like. Uh, when, when X Force was no longer around, and they had Ecstatics, and it was a bunch of weird ass mutants, and half of them would die every issue. But in issue fifteen, 
They were going to have Princess Di come out. She was going to be like a resurrected mutant. Her power was she can come back to life. Okay? So she would die and just get she resurrected would be by resurrected herself. resurrected and she was going to join the team. And the story arc was called... So her superpower was she was Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, degree. they already had a, 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 a dead girl. That was her power. She would oh, die and come true. back. But it was just going to have... It was going to be Princess Di. She's wearing like a little dress with, with like the X on the on the chest. And and the story was called Die Another Day. <laughs> <laughs> Which was later a James Bond movie. <laughs> it just so the title know, just fits title so well with what. Like I understand it, it's it's funny because that's British humor. Like, I, but the royal family took real real homage with that. Like they got pissed and told Marvel, "Hell no!" But that's the kind of comedy that you see in England. You know that that's British comedy right there. Dry and I'm like, damn, they didn't go for it. And it fit. If you read the book, it's crazy. It's out there and it fit. And when you see the cover, it's a great cover. I, could say, I won't say too soon, but this happened like in the nineties. <laughs> no, this was in twenty. No, no, no. Like when Princess yeah. Diana died, like we were kids. Yeah, like we were like in college when Ecstatics was out. You know, this is in the two thousands. Yeah, but this 2000s. wasn't. This was in the late two thousands, like um, late twenty tens. Yeah, um, it was great. It was a great layout, and I'm sure it would have been a fun story. But I mean, <laughs> I wonder what would have happened if Marvel would have published it because they can, the royal family can say don't do this, but what are they going to do? Right. Yeah, but it would have it would have been like a big deal because it would have been on every newspaper for like the wrong reasons. You know, like, oh, you're insensitive. And I'm sure she would have survived at the end. She probably would have been like one of the few. They would have, yeah, I agree. They would have, they would have off, killed yeah. her off again. But it was Ooh. a fun, it was a fun book. And when you see, it's a, go look it up online because you can see the cover. It's a really cool cover. It's a fun cover. You know, it's funny you see. She's jumping out of the screen like Spider-Man. Yeah, like she's jumping over like you know what's uh, one funny? of her teammates. How you, how you said she, they were going to kill her again. I mean, she died. <laughs> That'll be on our next conspiracy theory podcast. Is she really? Di- no, she died, guys. Yeah, she died, no. but was she killed? She was killed by paparazzi. <laughs> good thing. Good thing we're in, we have no listeners in the UK right now. Long live the queen. <laughs> so you know, I never understood the saying: "The queen is dead." Long live the queen. Because it was the departure of the previous monarch to the entrance of the new one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, I, I never, I had to think about that one when I was an adult. They're like. Just because there's a new one coming. Yeah. That's but right. I was like, dude, they just said the queen is dead. Long live the queen. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. Or, or, or the king is dead. Like, yeah. That's either either it was a transfer of power or they just took out the previous one. The new one's up there. There's another variant cover here that the title in and of itself created Comic Gate. Cyber Frog. Oh, that's because of that Skyver, yeah. 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 You think my Skyver is just, you know, he's out there. He's he's one of those people that just created this huge controversy. So Cyber Frog, what was the, the second part of the title? Reservoir Frog. Reservoir Frog issue two was a variant cover that Ethan Van Skyver did, limited to a thousand copies. And on the cover, there's a depiction of Kurt Cobain after he uh swaddled a shotgun show. That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I mean, it's right. I think it's on the bottom left corner. And that book got all sorts of, you know, flack because it just portrayed the great Kurt Cobain in that in that depiction. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was a uh, again, it's Ethan Van Skyver. You can't put anything too far from that guy, you know. But that was that that cover was is older, no? That's an older cover. Or was that something recent? No, nah, it was an older cover. Cyberfire yeah. from the nineties, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, but it was a, it was a, it was an older cover because so it was like one of the spinoff series. That's definitely a too soon moment, then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Talk about somebody that had like everything going for them, and then. Dude, well, but look at look, look at uh, our space from Preacher. He oh yeah goes to imitate Kurt Cobain and blows his head off and lives and has a fucking butthole for a face. <laughs> Actually, you know, there's a little, there's no book involved because they killed it before, but Ethan Van Sever was attached to the whole comic gate thing. They almost messed up Dynamite. Yeah. Um, Dynamite lost, uh, what's it, a couple of years ago, 2020, right? Yeah. Dynamite lost a bunch of creators that were going to take off um, when their contracts are over because they wanted to do a variant cover for, I forgot what book, with people from comic gate. Yeah. And that was a big deal where, like, they, they were going to lose... A lot of their big names, artists, and were writers. or did were I believe were I some they, they they never ended up producing the book. I know some finished their contract. Maybe they came back because the, the the collaboration never happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. But they were gonna they got into some deep shit because of it. All right. And then uh, speaking of deep shit, you know you've made it when you get a cease and desist. 
Yeah. <laughs> but they did that on purpose, man. Of course they did. They did that on purpose. So the publisher that we're talking about is called Devil's Do. Yeah. And they published AOC number one. And the cover was AOC as Wonder Woman. Well, so the, the original book was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah. And she's depicted pretty much blatantly as Wonder Woman. Holding an American flag. Yeah, holding the American flag. I mean, she's she's got the little thing on her head, the suit, everything. DC sees that, and then they send a cease and desist to the company, saying you can't make that because it looks like our IP. Yeah. So they take the some of the books made it out. That's what I was about to say. Some of the books made it out. Some but... of the books made it out, and you can find them. Mm-hmm. And then to I guess stick it to the man, the company comes out with AOC number one, and they. Titled it Ceased and Deceased. So Cease and Desist. <laughs> kind of just throwing a little jab at this at this at uh, at the at the what they the cease yeah. and desist they threw at them. And on the cover you have AOC as Wonder Woman. As Supergirl. As Supergirl, and then you have uh Batman. Batgirl Elizabeth Warren and Bernie as Green Lantern. Bernie as Green Lantern. <laughs> so yeah, I mean it was warranted a cease and desist because when you see this cover, it could have easily been any Wonder Woman, any iteration of Wonder Woman. Right. And, and it just, almost even looks like a, it almost looks like a, like Art Germish. Art Germish Gal Gadot ish. Like, if sort of teetered on that. It's no, done I, with the intent to yeah. deceive you. No, no, I mean, oh, it, might it, be a book, yeah. it looks like AOC completely in, 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 in as Wonder Woman. Right. But I mean, the, the the style of art that they they went with was I mean, it was just yeah, exactly. It was like it one was of like those B serious, covers yeah, from like a, from DC. It looks like yeah. a serious cover, not like something like oh, yeah. It's... And the title wasn't on the book, so if I'm a Wonder Woman fan, I would pick up that book mm. thinking I'm picking up Wonder Woman. Correct. Right. Yeah, I mean, and this is just a couple that we mentioned. There's so many more out there that either they were pulled, released, then pulled, never released, right. you know, altered after the fact. Like it's just. So many to go into, but luckily, I would say something good came out of uh, the acetate cover. We did this podcast. Huh? You yeah, did this podcast. <laughs> yeah. People, but, people but, got to learn a little bit more about. But listen, bootleg it's, stuff. It's it's not the first time it's happened, and it's it not going to be, be the last time. Oh no, and bootleg comics been around a lot longer than that. And the next variant that has an issue, rules will be made up. Yeah, yeah, on the because. Fly. It's never been done before. It's never been seen before. It's never had that kind of controversy behind it. So companies are going to come up with rules to benefit or not benefit them. So it's just something that, you know, it's each case is going to be different. That's the nature of the game. How many uh, blank covers weren't homaged, quote unquote, with the Raphael Albuquerque Joker and Batgirl? Yeah, he does a couple also. There's a couple out there that actually got slabbed. With yeah. that art on the cover, not his original art, obviously, no. but they were homaged on a black cover, on a blank cover. And there's some that are a little more salacious. Exactly. Listen, a uh, podcast artist favorite of ours is Scott Blair, and he puts all these heroes on blank covers doing crazy things. Correct. But it's different because there's something they drew, so that that's an original. No, sketch. but yeah, that's I completely agree because that's what the blank covers are designed for right. to have artists do their own depictions and their own iterations of it. It doesn't have to be sanctioned by anybody, right. so it's all good. But you know what? I, you know what I didn't notice too. What'd you notice? You can get a raw acetate on Amazon for like fifteen bucks. <laughs> oh, dude, we can make our own. We can make our own, <laughs> our own podcast variants. Let us know if we missed any variant covers down in the comments. Reach out to us in the DMs on Magic City Podcast. And guys, thanks for watching the video. If you like it, appease the algorithm gods. Hit the like bell. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and any other social media platform.